What's going on? Hey, what's going on? What's going on, guys? I know it's been a minute since you guys have seen me, but listen, I'm back again with another episode of the AJ Red Show, and I wanted to see you guys so, so fucking bad. I'm so glad to be back in my chair. But real quick, before we get into all those new things, guys, please, if this is your first time joining the channel, please go ahead now and hit the subscribe bell. So every time I decide to upload these videos or possibly go live, you can be one of the first ones to get these videos. And yes, comment. Drop down in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about the video, the topic, hell, maybe even my opinion. Please also make sure to hit that thumbs up button. The analytics portion says that helps me out a lot. We'll see later on down the road. And last but not least, please make sure to, what is it? What was the last thing, y'all? I, I ain't done this in a minute. Should subscribe, thumbs up, uh, comment, share. Share these videos, goddamn it. Share these videos with another friend, family member, another cousin. Share with somebody. You know, it may not be the Christmas season, but like Patty LaBelle says, why does it have to be a special occasion for you to give? Send them motherfucking videos to a cousin or a friend or a family member or a coworker or somebody you know that you're going to get a good cackle and kiki and leg slap with, all right? But yes, it's me, your boy, your homie, your cousin, your next door neighbor, your friend, maybe even your coworker if we fuck with each other like that. I'm back. Yes, again, you guys, I know it has been a minute since I've been in my chair, but let me tell you, I'm always so excited and I feel so empowered when I get in this chair to sit down and have a little conversation with y'all. Now, I've told you guys before what I'm doing in my uh, in the background of my life right now, which is uh, attending nursing school. Let me start out too by saying I appreciate all the um, affirmations, all the confidence, all the uh, support that I've gotten from you guys, uh, sending emails, texts in the comments section saying, we just wanna see you graduate, do your thing. I have, I, I appreciated those things. Um, they have not gone unnoticed. I did see those, and I wanted to let you know I thank you from the bottom of my little nerdy-ass heart. Um, but listen, y'all, um, I'm so glad to be back with y'all. There's so many things that have fucking happened. I feel like Wendy Williams are just coming back off hiatus. Other than I ain't drank myself into no motherfucking uh, dementia state, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I heard all the shit about Diddy going to, you know, getting his house raided and shit like that. They ain't picked him up yet. They ain't put no Chanel braces on his wrist yet, but, you know, I did hear about the raid and all that shit there. I heard the phone calls with R. Kelly and, um, what is it, not DJ Academics. What is, it was another DJ. He was on the phone with R. Kelly talking about the P. Diddy situation. So, yes, I know a lot of crazy motherfucking shit has happened since I have sat here on the King's Throne, but I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. I told y'all. I may take a little break or a little hiatus, but I'm never going to leave y'all. I love you guys too much, and I think y'all love me back, and I appreciate that so much. So, no, I'm never going to leave y'all. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. Um, it has been a few weeks. Um, I, I'm feeling great. I'm feeling better. Um, I've been getting good rest. Um, I've been getting into the rhythm of getting some things done. Yes, I've had a couple of bumps in the road, but shit, dang, man, pff, whatever. Just like any other day, you have a few bumps in your road. Keep that shit pushing. It's no different than a speed bump. You slow down, you go over that bitch. You might have to knock, you know, you, you pick your muffler up, you know, off the ground and put that bitch in the trunk or the back seat and tie it up with some string. You gotta, but the bottom line is, I'm trying to make the point to you is, there's going to be bumps in the road of life, but we have to learn how to navigate through those things. And I'm so glad to tell you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I can't keep, stop talking about it. I'm so glad to be back with y'all. Anyway. Um, there are some topics that I pulled, uh, some came across my desk, um, some I just pulled out of my bag of tricks and just decided to talk about. And so, um, fuck it, you know, let's jump right in because ain't no sense in wasting no time. We got a, 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 a plethora of things to discuss and I have plenty of opinions to put on there. That's why I think I don't do lives that much because doing my lives, I got to stop and read them because I love the lives, but I got to stop and read them. And my crazy ass... I'll be seeing the shit and be bypassing and I'm like, okay, let me answer that. Let me answer that. And scroll back down. So I think it's my hand-eye coordination that ain't right with it. I don't know. But I'm going to get more into doing that when you guys come. Because I see y'all been growing the channel see, even since I've been away. So I'm so grateful for that. Welcome all the newcomers. But anyway, getting into the show. Listen, um, I heard somewhere in the whispers of the wind that 
Latasha uh, Scott had made some plans that she's possibly going to sue the uh, current members of Escape. Now, as you all know, last year she went on a hiatus um, after they did the um, the show with Escape and who was it? Uh, not in Vogue. What them girls' name was? SWV. And um, Escape went into full throttle on tour, minus Latasha Scott, because she decided that she wanted to go take it to the Lord in prayer. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm feeling a bit parched. I typically don't finish my drink on, on, a, on a show, but I'm going to finish it tonight, y'all. We're going to have fun. At least that's my plan. We're going to have fun. But anyway, getting back to Latasha, they said she's trying to sue the girls since they're still going on without her and left her in the wind when she decided to disconnect from the ladies. Um, Y'all saw the show. If you didn't watch, she was juggling a decision on whether or not she was going to take a solo career and sign that contract or if she was going to sign the contract with Escape and go ahead and tour with them. Ultimately, she decided that she wanted to go to her church roots. She wanted to take it to the Lord in prayer. She wanted to sing gospel, do her own thing, take her own journey, right? Well, the girl said, hey, no problem, bitch. See you later. You know, see you in that great getting up morning. We'll holler, you know. We're going to go on and do our things. And the girls, uh, 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 Tamika, Tiny, and, 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 and Candy have been doing shit, a phenomenal job of pleasing the people on these on these tours and at these concerts. And it seems as though Latosh is mad. Now, the reason of the lawsuit is because the name of Escape, the girls are still using the name Escape while they're touring, making their, uh, their coin, right? And so Latosha, I guess, in her feelings now, feeling like, now she's fucking failed or flunked at being um, this gospel queen or this gospel uh, phenomenon that she thought she was going to be or that she had this dream for herself as, did not take off or did not go in the, the way that she had planned it to go. And she's realizing now that she made a terrible mistake, you know, leaving the group and telling the girls, fuck y'all, you know, uh, up your nose and, and round uh, up your up your nose and round the corner. And, I can't even say this shit right. My auntie says it's so fucked up. But she gave the girl the middle fingers. She gave all three of the middle fingers. I told them fuck them. She went off and decided to go do her um, church thing. But as we all know and found out very quickly, them albums wasn't selling worth the fuck. I'm sure right about now she got a uh, a warehouse, a uh, um, a garage. Probably full of nothing but fucking CDs that she didn't have printed. I'm sorry, like I have some uh, lime chile chips, and they are so fucking good. They are a little addictive. And I just finished eating some pickles, and some plastic pickles, the sliced ones. Them bitches were so good. I had I must have had about four, and you know, sprinkle a little kosher salt on there. Oh, talking about a good time. Oh yeah. A mighty, mighty good time. But no. <clears throat> These little chips from H-E-B. It's so good. I should probably nip with you on camera. Like a fucking llama. Tuna. What was I saying? Um... We were talking about Latasha, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so but now she's upset all of a sudden because the girls are going on making money without her. And she over there, you know, looking like a fucking fool with that gay rush full of those records unsold because the sales, let's just be honest, looking at them, they didn't go no motherfucking well. You don't see her touring around here with Shirley Caesar. The, the 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 mother of gospel, do you? You know, you didn't see her over there. They didn't even. You'd have thought with her being a new gospel artist that maybe she could have gotten in on the Kirk Franklin family reunion tour because the Clarkses was in there. But you know, and they had a couple of C-listers like Jessica Reedy and a few of them. 
You'd have thought they'd have put her in the lineup. No. Uh, uh, um. You'd have thought by now, I'd have thought, I, I honestly thought at some point I was going to hear of her coming to a city near me. Maybe over here in Houston to perform at one of these churches because they always have, um, what is it? Um, shit. Christmas in July at one of these churches out here, probably I think in the Woodlands or something, they give a free concert and they always have like Tamla Mann, the Clark Sisters, Kiara Shear, Yolanda Adams, like a whole different slew of artists, right? They ain't have her in that shit. They ain't even want her singing for Christmas in July. Uh, 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 maybe on oh, this girl's, uh, I think it's a girl's power into an empowerment tool with Kiki, uh, Sheard, Kelly, and some of these other ladies. We just haven't seen you do a motherfucking thing, um, Latasha Scott. And it seems as though now you're realizing that you broke, you, you, you done, you dusty, and ain't nobody in the gospel industry wanted your motherfucking ass in the beginning. I don't know who in the fuck decided to buck your head up other than your milk dud head ass husband and tell you some stupid shit like it was time to take your solo career to the next level and doing it in the, the department of gospel. Wrong. Wrong. We told you this stupid shit wasn't going to work. We told you it wasn't going to work. And I honestly, for the sake of the girls, doing, doing that reality show with uh, Escaping SWB, I was honestly rooting for her to leave the group. If you remember the videos, you go back and watch, I was rooting for her to leave the group because <clears throat> for you to have such cankerous fucking energy <clears throat> and such cankerous attitude to where all these years now, everybody in the group realizes that you were the actual cancer that was on the relationship of every person in the fucking group, including your own sister. Matter of fact, why you over there suing Latasha? Why you suing the girls for the name Escape? Have you paid Tamika her coin? I'm just saying, let's talk about it, right? Let's 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 just get the hard stuff out the way. Have you paid your sister her motherfucking money that you owe her? I'm sure you have it because you probably ain't got it. And you and your mama over there with that shake and go ass, dust cropper ass motherfucking wig. I'm pretty sure y'all sitting up there, unfortunately, plotting against these girls. Now, my whole thing is, I kind of thought at first, I ain't gonna lie, there was a part of me that kind of thought, damn, Natasha was like the, you know, kind of the soprano of the group. She did hit those high notes. They might not be able to make it. They might have to, you know, do something a little different. But me thinking as a singer, I'm like, shit, uh, bring that bitch down a couple of octaves. The, the group probably would never know. The, the audience maybe would never know. But we didn't have to really do that because Tamika was singing all of Latasha's parts. Candy says she was already singing her parts anytime that uh, Latasha didn't show her pie face ass up. Anytime the biscuit face bitch didn't show up. They say Tamika was singing the parts anyway. And we saw in the record record recordings, recordings that Tamika actually was singing those parts on her own. So I'm just thinking to my uh, you know, I'm just thinking to myself, we don't need you, bitch. The girls don't need you, bitch, and you just mad. The girls have proved to you. See, I think it was I, I think it was like she felt maybe like um Coco. When Coco left the other girls, you know, she was the lead singer for pretty much all their motherfucking songs. The other girls said that they could hold their own, and they, mm, they kind of could, but maybe not heavily in the solo department in R&B, or maybe not anything else but maybe gospel. Because anybody can sing a good old Amazing Grace and make a bitch holler one time want to run around the church and throw a pump in the air, you know what I'm saying? And put a hot 20 or a 100 in a collection plate and rip them holler loud enough, you know what I'm saying? But... Coco knew she was the voice of that group. And when she left the girls, she left the girls in despair. She left them without a career. She left them without a living. She left them without money. You know what I'm saying? That shit ran out quick for them. You saw the show if you watched. But I think Tasha thought that when she left these girls, the first time that she was actually the reason that Escape, you know, broke up the very first time, we all found out, apparently from Candy and, and, and some of the other girls of the group, that... It was almost a mutual decision, but almost, again, because of that cankerous-ass motherfucking energy 
that negative downtrodden ass, low snake in the wagon trench ass energy that Latasha was always bringing to the group around the girls. Now, don't get me wrong. The girls had a little cattiness amongst themselves, Tiny, Candy, and Tamika. But let's just keep it a buck. No cap. Let's just go ahead and say it and call the motherfucking cow what he is because I see him over in the past eating green grass. They say, how can a white cow eat green grass and still get white milk? I don't know. That's just the law of fucking nature. But the bottom line I'm trying to tell to you is we all saw it. That her motherfucking ass always had a dark cloud over the group every time she was in the room or arrived on a scene with the rest of the girls. Right? So, she, again, after the girls discussed and, and I guess matured, they found out that she was a lot of the mess making and bullshit in, in the situation, right? So, with her being gone... She thought that, again, too, now that she abandoned them again, yet again, and now she's going and actually pursue this 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 solo career because, let's just be honest, it didn't work the first time and shit. It really didn't do much around this time. I'm a little parched. Hold on. Um, but, yeah. She didn't do well on this solo career now. And now she and old uh, Milk Dud over there sitting around trying to figure out a way to get money. And now it seems like a desperate attempt because you know we don't need your motherfucking ass. And we don't need you and your manipulating ass husband and your puppeteering ass, mind bearing ass motherfucking ways that you, you know, tend to fall under when it comes to business and your love life. Now, I'll be honest with you. Let's just say, for instance, okay, I'm pretty sure Candy probably talks business with Tar. But everybody knows, if we all know, any of us know Candy, Candy's going to give the final motherfucking verdict on a business decision, especially if it's hers. Well, mainly if it's hers. And Candy told us she came back because she saw business deals being made and life movies and shit that were being made about her life that she figured that could not happen without her written permission. And she found out from her lawyer, just listen, bitch, you're a public figure. And yes, they can make a movie about your life if they want to because you are a public figure. If they can afford it, they can put it out. But I, I just feel like Latasha, in the end, I feel like stop being an ass, stop being a dick, just, just stop acting like a real fucking cunt. You know, I would have thought as a godly woman, maybe you'd have spent some time in the seminary. Maybe you'd have went down on bended knee like boys to men told you to do. Um, maybe you'd have stretched your hands to thee. And maybe you would have looked to the hills from which cometh your help and asked the hills to supply this money and a little forgiveness and a little therapy so you can go down there to your sister and make her whole again and bring your relationship back to a good state. Because all you're doing now is digging yourself in a deeper hole and you look like a desperate ass bitch to us in the public. I'm just be honest with you, Tasha. LaTasha. LaTasha. Ooh. I'm just going to be honest with you. You look like a desperate motherfucker. You look like it's a desperate attempt to collect money to pay some bills because that gospel album flipped like a motherfucking burnt pancake. Wasn't nobody buying it. Nobody was biting. So it seemed to me what you should do is go down there and go to church, get yourself saved, as y'all say, in the church house, and, 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 and come up with another approach because this, it looks bad. It looks bad on you. As a woman at, at, at your age, as a black woman, um, as a public figure, it just looks bad. You look stupid as fuck. And you look desperate and thirsty as a motherfucker. So do something different. Do something different. Let me move on to another topic. I done spent 15 minutes talking about this blonde bitch. What else we going to talk about? All right, y'all. Um, I'm going to throw this one up in here. Miss Netta, I told you I got to write shit down. Miss Netta. Miss Netta. All right, now, we didn't had enough, Miss Nettle. Charles, we didn't had enough. 
Fuck your lunch. Fuck them, them, fuck them crab paws you over there sucking on. Fuck them unpeeled, unshelled ass, undeveined ass motherfucking shrimp you over there burning with no motherfucking season up in that motherfucking shell. At least put some salt and pepper up in that motherfucker. For God's sake, some, some, some fucking crab boil in that motherfucker. That shit didn't even fucking turn color. You, we did, we, we've had enough of y'all and y'all motherfucking muckbanging bullshit. We just had enough of y'all out here using soundtracks for motherfucking applause in the background as y'all jump in the car. Why the fuck fuck y'all ain't turn the camera around so we can see the goddamn people? We is tired of y'all motherfucking ass out here acting like y'all motherfucking got it. Let me tell you something. Miss Netta. And y'all ladies vouch for me. And I can vouch for myself. I can go upstairs and grab something out the closet right now. Ain't no motherfucking way. Them bags you buy Miss Netta come from no motherfucking Louis Vuitton store. Ain't none of them motherfucking boykins. You pulling out them bags over there coming from no motherfucking. Bitch, you done been down there to the beauty supply store or to the swap meet, the shopping stop. Uh, bitch, you must have been over there on Crenshaw somewhere over there. I don't know what you must have went to the flea market because, bitch, listen, I can tell you for a fact, Miss Netta. Miss Netta had the nerve to sit up here and say, man, I said, really, Miss Netta said, we hating on them. Miss Netta said, uh, 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 we can't afford them. They're going to be on a BET red carpet, for, you know, for the BET Music Awards. Uh, they getting a reality show lined up, but it's on hold because they shopping the shit around and all this. Uh, Miss Netta, I can honestly tell you, them bags you buying, bitch, we all know they, they fake. We all know they 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 come from they ain't come from they, they're not original. And bitch that said we can't buy you, bitch. I bet you right now I can go online, bitch, and I bet you I can order you at least a real Gucci bag, bitch, and, and pay full price for it outright and send it to your motherfucking doorstep, Miss Netta. How about that? How about that, Miss Netta? I can buy you a nice a nice real Gucci, bitch. I have it. Girl, please. And I'm not sitting there telling nobody I can go buy 10 of them bitches or 12 of them. But I can I can buy a, a, a few, a couple. And my shit ain't, <laughs> mine ain't rolling like Miss Netta say hers is. But Miss Netta gonna sit up here and tell us she can buy a motherfucking Gucci that she pulls 75 pieces of motherfucking bubble wrap and motherfucking snap wrap and plastic off of and tape and all this shit. Bitch, really? Where is the unboxing, bitch? I ain't never seen nobody with a Birkin, a Gucci, a motherfucking Louie, bitch, that did an unbagging, bitch. They did an unboxing for all of them. And, and I, I've done an unboxing. So, I mean, come on, Miss Netta. Get real. The BET Awards, what the fuck you gonna sing? Charge your lunch is ready, bitch? If this lunch ain't ready by now, because I'm tired of... Charge your lunch is ready. I'm so sick of that motherfucking shit. I don't know what to do. I see it now on TikTok, and I just scroll right the fuck on past. But Miss Netta is smelling herself, and I blame y'all. I blame y'all for this shit. I blame all of you. I'm partly responsible too, but I blame all of y'all. Because y'all made that mountain mohair face looking bitch real think she that that she is everything that everybody wants. That bitch had the nerve to sit up and tell me. I'm gonna tell you the conversation I feel like she and I had through TikTok. That bitch told me, she said, she and Charles are the number one couple right now in the US. Say what? What, 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 what you say, Miss Netta? Bitch, please. The number one couple for what? For what? Now, if you give me a category, and it better be a damn good category too, Miss Netta. You naughty cone face, bitch. You better give it. You better. It better be a good reason. And I'm gonna tell you what a good reason has to be. A good reason has to be because you you know maybe. 
What was viral? Because y'all went viral with the charge your lunches ready shit. I feel you on that. Because people were singing the shit, you know, goofing around, watching and talking about Miss Nett over there in her two piece when damn God sure need know she needed about twelve more pieces to put on on that motherfucking outfit when she got in that hot tub that time. But another good reason would be wait, I'm just gonna skip that part. Fuck that. Well, I'm, no, I'm gonna finish that. Why would they be the number one couple? The funniest couple? The only couple I think that probably got plastic surgery in no time that pretty much got it on a discount or free uh, that it didn't last. And it looked like from the from the, from the the looks of Miss Netta in the back in that kitchen when she turned around chopping them onions up and stuff, it looked like her her her, her BBL went away. It looked like it, it, it slid right down to her calves or somewhere, bitch. That BBL is DDL. Down, down low. It's gone. She back to knick-knack, patty wet, give a dog a what? She ain't got nothing back there. And y'all the hottest couple in the, in the USA for what? Bitch, I thought they told me but Beyonce and, uh, oh, honking over Jay-Z is the, uh, <laughs> is the hottest couple in the U.S., I would assume, but it damn sure wouldn't be you and Charles. Miss Netta says she, she spent $23,000 on that boykin. Y'all believe him? Drop down in the comment section. Let me know if y'all believe Miss Netta brought a $23,000 boykin. That bitch probably bought a, 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 a $23 goykin. Or a $75 coochie. Or maybe an eighty dollar Louis Vuitton, but ain't no way on God's green, yellow, purple, and brown earth, Miss Netta or Yelzebub, beady eye, big eye, cock eyed, rotator cuff eyeball, um, Sherry, she, what her name is, Sherry and Sunny, beady eyed, nighty comb face ass from the city pen, tell me that she sat up here and went down to nobody's store and bought that shit authentically from no mall. You just a you just a nighty face lie. And then she ought to talk about somebody ought to stop talking about her face. Let me tell you, the reason I'm going in on this bitch because this bitch been letting everybody else have it. And guess what? This is all about the gossip. You want to gossip about other people, bitch, I'll gossip about you. And guess what? If another bitch choose to gossip about me, then so be it. I'm just going to get up on here and gossip about that bitch. But I want it to be all true shit. And everything I said about Miss Nettie is true. Y'all know it's true that she ain't got no mere motherfucking boy kid. Y'all know it's true that she over there and she, listen... I'm trying to hold. I'm trying to hold my mule. Listen. Looking like Nevada about to face, bitch. Looking like straight up Nevada. Denver mountains everywhere, and this you gonna tell me about something? Y'all need to send me some more of that cream and that facial stuff, cause it's helping, and I'm running out. Bitch, where's helping at? Cause all them pictures you're on, and all them goddamn videos you in, bitch. All they're doing is. Filtering the fuck out of it. She don't holler about it. it's the makeup and the lights. Bitch, there ain't enough makeup in Mac. They can send you a truckload, bitch. I'm talking like semi-truckload. And unless you get somewhere and let somebody get a, a, a laser, like them kind uh, they use on Star Wars or something like that, and fuck that shit up for the one time and smooth it over, oh, yes, bitch, I'm coming for you now because you done, you done dogged us the fuck out. I just got on here to let bitches have it tonight. Cousins, y'all drop down in the comment section and let me know if I'm wrong or if I'm right about it. And if you disagree, fine. If you agree, told you so. But Miss Netta, come on, girl. Because you're doing too much. Bitch, because we all know it's rare that people like you find a man, whether you pay for him, whether... You cook a little something fun, because let's just be honest, bitch. Them plates don't be looking that motherfucking delicious, okay? Because I done seen a plenty of niggas cooking for they nigga, just like you, nigga, on TikTok and, and, and fucking Instagram and steaking potatoes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Green beans, snap peas, and all this other shit, mixed vegetables. I make better mother... I can guarantee you, I will show you how a dish I can make better in this motherfucking kitchen than Miss Nettles. It's going to look better, and I guarantee you it's pretty much going to taste better as well. We just tired of the shit. 
Go, go, listen, I'm all for everybody winning. I'm here for the win, win. I just want to see people win. But I have a problem with you when you decide to be an arrogant, ignorant, beady-eyed, naughty cone, nutty-faced bitch. <laughs> and Miss Nedlin got too big for that fucking bonnet. And speaking of which, y'all, listen, I'm going to throw a quick plug in. Shout out to Origins. I get all my shit from Origins. Um, Miss Nedlin, I don't know the, what the fuck she's using. Maybe she need to switch over to what I use. They have all natural products, y'all. Um, Origins, you can get it online. Or you can get it at Ultra Beauty. You can get it at Dillard's. And the shit that I use, uh, one of them is called Checks and Balances. And basically, it's like a toner. And I think there's a, a face wash, too, um, that I wash with. And I actually put it on. And it kind of, that's probably why my skin is so fucking shining. Because I just did a skin regimen before I got on. Uh, I do the charcoal mask. Um... Um, the, um, there's a vitalizer or something. All this stuff is natural. It's made from like ginger, oranges, orange peels, uh, turmeric, um, just different oil extractions and leaves and those type of things. And I found that with my skin, um, that product works the best. There's even like a spot remover, they call it a uh, spot remover. It's this clear ac acrylic substance like, and if you have like dark spots, it's to actually put on those dark spots. I don't know what the fuck it does. I don't know if it oxygenates or deoxygenates the spot, but it helps bring that color back to that spot. But I tell you what, um, if it wasn't for this uh, stud that did my hairline and then got that big little crooked, y'all might not notice that shit. But I'm 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 gonna fuck around and straighten up like this here. <laughs> but but no, um, if I had a little shit, a little makeup artist or something like that, I'd be on fire. But no, that's that's probably why my skin is like glistening or shining so much. That and the lights, of course. I didn't use no oil, no cocoa butter, no shit like that. But there's like this washer. And um, it helps uh, takes the oil out of your pores. And I have combination skin. Like, I have oily skin in some places and dry in others. And um, Origins, O-R-I-G-I-N-S. Again, that's a shameless plug. It ain't my product. But if y'all want to know about a good product that'll actually help you, go into your local, um, like I said, Ulta, Dillard's. Um, and some origins are still standalone stores, and then sometimes you can actually go online. But if you don't know much about your skin, go into those places, and they can actually, um, they'll do like a test on your skin, and like, you, you tell them what, what issue you have, and sometimes they can kind of see it. And they'll pull different shit, and they'll give you a, a free facial um, right there in the store. And you'll kind of see the difference, and they'll tell you the kind of stuff that you need to buy to bring home to actually complete the skin regimen to keep yourself looking so... Um, your skin to look like healthy, shiny, hydrated, um, and not oily. Because my skin doesn't feel oily. Like, I'm doing all this, you still don't see. I don't have no makeup or no shit on. It's not oil on my hand. It's, it's none of that. It's still the same. But it um, there's a lot of the product. Um, there's this mushroom um, serum. Like, for the guys that shaving, there's even Blade Runner. So, if you shave, when you shave, you're going to actually put Blade Runner on, and it actually... It's one of the things that uh, helps to keep your skin from uh, inflaming, like when you shave. And then like those red parts from lining, you can put that uh, mushroom um, toner on there and it helps reduce like the redness. Like when she did my shit, my shit was on because I'm light skinned and I'm, I swear it looks like I'm oily as fuck, but I'm not y'all. My shit was on fire. But when I came in and did that skin regimen, that mushroom, I think I think it's a toner or something, but it, it, it like deflaminated if that's the word deflamed yeah deflamed i don't know fuck the red spots and it wasn't as red and shit like that anymore and it, it went pretty quickly but anyway origins go over there and check them out it's a good product um all this shit is good go check it out but and miss nether need to go check it the fuck out too because whatever they doing ain't working either they ain't doing it hard enough fast enough or doing it enough enough but anyway, Miss Nettie, go sit your ass down somewhere. Ain't nobody worried about you and uh, Charles old pot belly ass wearing them old bullshit ass clothes. And then she had the nerve to have her uh, functified church going yells above Billy Go bronze wearing shoe wearing ass up in motherfucking city trends. Talking about she up in there shopping her stylist. Bitch, your stylist got you in city trends, bitch. But you just bought a twenty three thousand dollar boykin, bitch. Sit your motherfucking ass down with that old bullshit ass line. I sure hope the fuck you won't be over there shopping at City Trends for the Red Carpet Awards, bitch. 
Oh, yes, bitch. You talk that shit now. I'm going to let your fat ass have it. You talking my wall belly, bitch. That girl walking around there looking like a fake pad of the bill, like a pad of the bill gone wrong. That bitch walking around looking like a stack of pancakes from IHOP. That girl looked like the Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity off the menu, bitch, with that red all, all in one outfit on. Oh, yeah, Miss Nettle, you want to let us punk bitches have it and these women's have it, bitch? Let your motherfucking ass have it, too. I ain't had a drink in a long time, bitch, and I ain't had an argument. In a long time, you want to argue, Miss Netta? Let's argue, bitch. I don't mind. Because the bottom line is, I'll argue you down like Johnny Crockman to the last day, bitch. Like he did for O.J. Simpson before he checked the body and took his last motherfucking breath. Rest in peace, Johnny Crockman and O.J. Simpson. But the bottom line is, bitch, I'll argue you all day long that you ain't been bought no boykin. And you over there shopping in city trends for them old rompers and shit. The same basic shit everybody else wearing. And, and you over there telling everybody, you and Charles got this and got that. Y'all might have got a little corn off TikTok. Y'all might have seen a couple of people, bitch, when y'all traveled around. But, bitch, you ain't got it like that. There ain't a whole lot of celebrities that can outright buy a Birkin that's been out here longer than you. And we've been knowing them and seeing them longer than you and Charles before his even lunch even motherfucking came ready, bitch. So you can go sit down with that bullshit. And as far as Charles... Trying to train a woman up in the way that she should go. Charles, how the fuck you gonna train a motherfucking woman and you over there sleeping with a man dressed as a woman? Get the fuck out of here, bruh. We ain't here for the bullshit. Come on now. Oh, yeah. I told y'all. I was here with the shits. Come on, Charles. How you, gonna, how, how, how you gonna tell somebody, a woman, how to act? He said a woman can't be in her dominant energy and be in her feminine energy at the same time. That's a bullshit motherfucking lie. You and your dominant and feminine energy at the same time every day. That's for every male and female. Every man and every woman has a dominant and a feminine side. I mean, it's, if you don't believe me, look at Miss Netta, bitch. Come on now. Let's get this shit straight now. Come on now. Miss Netta, talk dominant, speak dominant, and she just be, eh, eh. All that girl is doing is just taking that thing up an octave above her motherfucking uh, Adam's apple, baby. She still running around with the man titties doing all this shit. She still got the same appendage down in between her motherfucking legs as the rest of us. Trust me, because I have mine. It ain't going nowhere. So she's living in her feminine and her dominant energy. Her masculine, I'm sorry, I've been saying feminine and masculine energy. Correction. So, come on now. Charles... You can't tell no, no woman how to behave. Just because you see, and just because you see Miss Daddy putting on good hair now, bitch, you feel like you got the right to step out there in them shoes and them fucking sweatpants and that white beater like you just got out of the motherfucking penitentiary and tell women how to behave. Just because your dude just got a good hair piece? Huh? Don't hand us that. Like Harriet Winslow. Don't hand us that. We don't want it. Take it back. You can't tell the girls how to be. And you and you still you you have you over here think you got a Jasmine Sullivan, you know, a beautiful work of art over here because you got Miss Netta, and you still got to teach Miss Netta to buy a pair. We all listen, bitch. Just cause Miss Netta wanna be a woman and she wants to wear the latest shoes, bitch, she better buy a custom size. Cause the way I'm seeing them motherfucking toes hang out the front of them fucking shoes like a tarantosaurus, bitch. I know fucking well. Come on now. You got work to do over there before. They say chariot begins at home. <laughs> you need to... Charity begins at home. You need to work on Miss Netta. Y'all everywhere y'all want to be, like American Express, Except the, and the Louis Vuitton store, because y'all ain't been up in there. Y'all might have been up in that window shopping, bitch, but y'all ain't picked up now, P. But you need to take Miss Netta down, and the next place we need to see Charles and Miss Netta is at a 24-hour fitness, bitch. Uh, Planet Fitness. We need to see you bitches doing a motherfucking fitness commercial. Cause why, because as far as I'm concerned, y'all already been on botched. Y'all already been on botched. When y'all got y'all little surgeries and stuff done, so I mean, let's keep this train gonna keep on rolling. This train gonna keep on rolling. Listen, 
Let's go and put your. <laughs> Cause you talking about a fucking reality show. What the fuck is the name of the show going to be? I want somebody to play. Drop down in the comments and let me know. Y'all need to give me some titles of what y'all think Miss Netta and, and Mr. Charles reality show name is going to be. Because she said they are shopping it around because. What is the name of it? It was a network um, that they were dealing with. <laughs> And she figured she wanted to shop it around to Netflix, Netflix, or Hulu, or one of them. She said, but I want y'all motherfucking cousins. Y'all are being called to duty. I'm giving you all homework tonight. I need you all to drop down the comment section and let me know what you guys think is a good title or what would be a good title for Miss Netta and Charles' uh, reality show. That Y'all, please do that for me. But anyway, in the meanwhile, what do I think they, what could the name of the show be? Um, Lump and Leisure? I don't know, because, I don't know. I don't even know their last names. I would say, but whatever their last names are with that in the title, maybe. I don't know. Um, fuckery? I don't know. <laughs> fuckery on the regular. I, I don't know. Um, they probably going to name it some shit like Charles, your lunch is ready. And I can see Miss Netta's theme song as, 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 the, as I can see Miss Netta's song as the theme music. But them trying to remix it some kind of way to kind of upbeat it or whatever. But I just, it's going to be challenging for the makeup artist, though. And the stylist. Because Miss Nettie really, I don't think she had no, no plastic surgery. I think she just, they just draw lines on her and stuff. Because we ain't seen a recovery stage. I didn't, if y'all did, let me know. I want some more pickles. But not get out here with y'all. I'm going to give me some more pickles on the plate, for real. I'll probably get some. Corn chips. Mm. Or some ice cream. I don't know which one. But one comes first. But anyway, who in the, ain't nobody gonna watch that shit? Oh, uh, I, I I was I followed Miss Netta at one point, but then when she started getting like the big head and started you know talking about people and talking all this crazy shit and to my we hating on her and all this different shit here. I unfollowed her. Because I'm like, bitch, what am I hating on you at? For what? My real hair is longer than yours. And, and let me just be clear. Let me be clear. I'm not sitting up here just sitting there going, going in on Miss Netta because of any other reason for the simple fact of if you have seen Miss Netta here lately, I've been in solace. I've been over here in solitude over here doing schoolwork, you know, traveling the highways and the byways, uh, feeding the hungry, doing what the law told me to do and going to school and whatnot and going to work and paying these people their money for these bills. But I still been seeing Miss Nettie in the platforms over there on the TikTok letting us motherfucking have it. And I'm laying up in the bed with my stomach. I'm looking at TV and shit, but I'm still scrolling every time I see something, I'm seeing Miss Netta. And she's Miss Netta sitting down, letting the bitch motherfucking have it, having it. She gathering bitches like a 150 piece puzzle. And I think there's more pieces to it than that. But she gathering us up. She letting us have it. I feel like she, just like Messi C O country band, sweat band, hair, fur coat wearing. I, that bitch, bitch, y'all sitting on, on the internet. That bitch said our mamas and our daddies wasn't the shit. If we looked up to our mamas or our daddies as a role mama, they wouldn't shit. Now, how the, who the fuck are you to get on a motherfucking camera and tell me my mama or my daddy wasn't shit? I know my daddy wasn't shit. But my mama means everything to me, and I love my daddy too. But, bitch, looking at you, the way you over there, you are Mrs. in the morning and a Mr. in the afternoon and somewhere in between at night. And you got cheering, you trying to raise, and you going to who fucking role model are you, messy? Oh, yes, I'm plugging it in tonight. I mean, I got all the motherfucking lights on in this bitch. I'm lighting it up. For all you bitches that thought, uh, uh, 
gospel had gone too far. Oh, no. There's more room. Little room, little room, little room, little room, little room, little room, little room. Stop playing with people and shit. Talking about people's mamas and daddies and shit. You wouldn't like nobody talking about your mother or father. But then and again, you probably wouldn't give a fuck because you're talking about your grandma and shit. And then you talk about your grandma so much and they talk about your grandma in a good life. But your mama and your grandma never done shit for you. And couldn't have been that somewhat of a woman because she raised your silly ass. Or better yet, they didn't feed you your motherfucking medicine on, 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 a, on a schedule like the doctor told them to. But at the end of the day, uh, Mrs. C and Miss Netta, go fuck a duck. Go fuck it up. Because Mr. C ain't even a real factor. Miss Netta ain't really even a real factor. But it's just a simple fact that you sit up here and do all this. That's what we're talking about with black folk. To get a little coin, what you should have been doing is taking your SpongeBob SquarePants built ass around there somewhere and trying to invest your motherfucking money so you and Charles will have that money to, to lean on in the coming years. And there wouldn't be a whole lot to be, you know, kind of worried about because you ain't bitch let's just be honest joe i mean i mean miss netta uh, <laughs> let's just be honest miss netta um you ain't no young girl no uh you know you you just about a golden girl bitch everything on you turning white it, all the, the snow on your rooftop and your chimney i mean bitch come on now and that's what a lot of black folk you know, you are mistaken and jump out there and think just because they made a couple of dollars, we've hit it big, we're the shit, nobody can touch us, we're rich. But you don't understand today's economy. $200,000 or so, or $250,000, hell, $500,000. I I know people personally that have won a million dollars. Well, they were kind of nowhere in their life. They were struggling kind of every day to day, like the average American working and stuff. And then they won a million dollars. I can tell you a friend right now that won a million dollars. And it didn't take long for that friend to be back now down on his knuckles. It's all about what you do with that money when you when you receive it. You, you take me for instance. I don't run y'all don't y'all ain't never seen me get on this bitch with no Louis hat, no, 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 no breaking bag, uh, no Gucci hat, none of that stuff. I have a couple of things upstairs. I have a few things, but I don't have a plethora of Gucci and red bottoms and 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 I have a couple of Gucci shoes, hats. But but I mean, I'm not a Beyonce and Jay Z. I'm 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 not a Candy Burris. I'm not a, a Chris Rock. I'm not uh, a Rihanna, and I'm saying in their financial bracket, you feel me? I'm not um, any of these big stars. You know, I don't have that kind of money right now. I have, okay, but I ain't got that m millions status, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, it's like you have to build a foundation, and that starts somewhere. And if every time we decide we get a lump sum of money and we get a little bit of fame and notoriety, um, we turn our backs to some people and we have to start talking down to folks. And then we take that money. Now we're running out here and buying unnecessary things that we don't need just to show off to people that don't even really give a fuck about us. We're just being entertainers to them in some degree. But shit, bitch, whatever, bitch. Go on, bitch. I got mine. I put mine over there in the savings, bitch. You can go in and buy all the Lewis you want, bitch. And, and and trust me, I ain't got a Birkin upstairs at all. A Birkin anything. And I ain't got no Nurkin or no Gherkin. Because if it ain't real, I ain't going to buy it. I don't want it. And I don't I don't splurge on shit like that. Because <laughs> life is about a whole lot more than that. I might have a couple of those things just to go out with. And to be in certain rooms and circulate with certain people. Right? Um, but I'm not in love with any of that stuff. Anyway... Uh, Miss Netta Gerby. Um, let's move on to the next thing. I got so much other shit on him I want to talk about real quick. Um, I was gonna talk about uh OJ Simpson, you know, killing over and dying and stuff. Uh and then Caitlyn Jenner saying good riddance. 
Uh, all I really got to say about that is, yes, O.J. Simpson was not the best of person. We pretty much can deduce. We all pretty much figured that he killed Nicole and Ron. Whatever. He got off on it. Johnny Cochran got him off, you know? So what does he do? So, I mean, I'm pretty sure sometime last week he had to stop and have a discussion with Ron and, 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 and Nicole. You know, whether it was on good terms or bad terms. I don't know. But the bottom line is, OJ wasn't no angel in no lights. But for Caitlyn to get her bad body, bulldagging, built ass up on there and talk about good riddance, you fucking flunky. You fucking flunky junkie. You ain't, you bitch. You done ran and, and you done been and hit them fucking people, bitch, and killed them in that fucking car accident. It's no wonder you got your funky ass out the shit. I'm sure that family is sitting around right about now, sitting there wishing they singing they should have could have waters and bitch. How they figure you ought to have your funky skeletal looking ass locked the fuck up, you plump, berry face looking bitch. I don't even understand still to this day. I never got the chance to address the fact that how the fuck did you decide to be a fucking woman? Huh? And then all of a sudden get woman of the year, bitch. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. You ugly, pumpernickel, bread face looking withered up old bitch. How the fuck you gonna get up on there and gonna say you gonna wish another black man dead? Now, like I said, O.J. Simpson wasn't no motherfucking saint. And I didn't preach his funeral, but, but let me tell you this, bitch. You don't earn the right to do that. With anybody, honestly, especially after you've been involved in the shit that you've been involved in, you fucking walking mummy, walking fucking statues. I just never understand, like, all the shit that, that can be said about your funky, long, no-dressing, canker butter thigh, ankle bended, knee-looking ass bitch. You ought to been getting your ugly ass somewhere and sitting the fuck down with them old Gucci Chanel ass wigs on your motherfucking head. Now, that bitch probably got a boykin somewhere sitting around. Net him. But Kate Lynn... You don't earn you don't earn the right to say shit like that. You sit your funk ass down somewhere, bitch. Cause like they said, it, 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 your time coming to Mrs. Dow Five. Cause bitch, you what eighty years old? Your fucking self, Caitlyn Jenner. I what eighty years old? Seventy eight, eighty one. I don't know. Was you born in? Was you born in forty two? With Judge Judy, I don't know. Forty four. I don't know. Anyway, fuck her. All right, she don't tell nobody what to do. Ain't nobody studying about what else I got on these fucking papers? Because I'm getting... I said I was going to finish my drink this time. I got two topics left. And I'm 57 minutes in. I know y'all tired of me talking already. Have y'all seen the new Good Times they put on Netflix? The cartoon version? Have y'all seen it? Are y'all going to watch it? I can't give y'all my Netflix to watch it because... <laughs> They don't do that no more. Yeah. And I only have that's how I can fred that's how I can afford my Gucci bag. I had to make sure my uh Netflix plan is only the cheap one with the commercials. <laughs> Fuck that. I say what I can to in, to in, to uh indulge elsewhere where I won't. But have y'all seen the cartoon though? And if so Drop down in the comment section and let me know what you thought about it, if you've seen it or watched it. Now, I'm going to give y'all my take on it. I um I watched the episode, a half episode, and I wasn't pleased. I I I, I didn't I didn't like it um at all. I and, and maybe Y'all let me know if I'm moving too fast. Let me know. Maybe I'm moving too fast on it, but maybe I need to see another episode or two, but I don't like it because it doesn't seem like it's giving, having moved forward into this day and age in a good light for the, for the, for the, uh, I'm about to say for the Jeffersons, for uh, the Evans family, Right. And when I see that, because they basically got them like some kind of hood family, uh, cussing and acting a the fool. They have no morals. Uh, I didn't see Florida nowhere in the bitch. 
We knew James had done died somewhere up on the thing. We all knew that when the, when the real episode went off of Good Times, the, the sitcom, that I think Thelma was pregnant with the baby. She had married a football player. He had gotten off that shit and gotten off that liquor, gotten his knee back together. He was actually on, Keith was actually on his way back to the NFL, and they were getting out of the ghetto. Hey, they were getting out the ghetto. Uh, Michael had gotten a full scholarship ride over there to, I think, the law school and shit like that. Uh, 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 he was getting out the ghetto. Uh, uh, JJ had gotten, I think it was enough money or a uh, job or something like that. He was getting his, his, his art thing off the ground and getting out the ghetto. Uh, I just don't understand why they're, why, why they're not picking up from from there and moving forward and giving the family still some some kind of moral. Cause they got the man walking around with a fucking white beat on and shit, cussing at the kids and talking shit. I'm like, this is more, this, it, it, it gave more, it was giving Bebe's kids vibes to me. And I don't like it. I, I, I'll watch, I'll watch another episode or so to see what I can stomach. But I'm, I'm, I'm really not pleased. Y'all gotta, y'all got to help me on this one. Because, to me, it ain't worth it. Um, Norman, they still got Norman Lear's name on it. Norman Lear, she was born in 40, December something of 44, I think it was, or July or something, 44. In, oh, 40, was it 44? He was dead last year, December. But they still put Norman Lear's name on it. So I don't know if somebody bought the rights. Or, or the producers have it, or what? What? What the? What the big deal is? But whoever wrote this, either they must let Bonquisha and Ray Ray Nam write it, or it's just some racist ass white folk that's behind the scenes writing this bullshit. Think we just gonna accept this? And of course, again, I'm pretty sure they have the publications and the rights to the scripts and all this different stuff, and um, they can pretty much do as they please. And I don't know if, um, Lord. I'm about to say Bernie's, what is the girl's name? Shit, if JJ and them are getting paid off it or not. I really don't know the details of that. If you know, drop down in the comment section and let me know. I don't know what the fuck that happened to me. I still got so much energy though. But I guess I'm I felt like I was doing too much and I used too much of my energy on Miss Netta and them. Cause they will be safe back home. Cause we don't say Miss Netta and Messi or C or not. Miss Miss Netta and Neil. Who the fuck is Neil? Are they related to Eminem? McCandy and the rapper? Mm hmm. Maybe it's a hot thought. I don't know shit. Just like some shit like if you take hot sauce and put them in an ice cube holder and put them in the freezer and you take them out and put them in a drink. Would it be hot or cold? Hmm. I don't know. Just thoughts. Anyway, y'all think about that one. But nevertheless, I don't like the 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 the, the new Good Times cartoon because I had my coworker ask me that and I did, I couldn't give her an answer because I hadn't saw it yet. And I came home and watched it, and I was like, mm, I can give her an honest answer. It's not it's not my Jewish. I don't like it. Last thing, last but not least, have you all heard of G Gerard Carmichael? Um, he's a comedian. Um, he has a show it used to be called, well, it's not used to be called, it's called The Carmichael Show. It's on Hulu. And it's starring Gerard Carmichael um, as himself, so to speak, Loretta Devine, David Allen Greer, um, Tiffany Haddish, uh, Lil Rail, and there's another young lady, I don't quite know her name. Um, but they're all on this show, and the premise of this show, um, oh, fuck that. Wait, 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 okay, the premise of this show is he's with this girl, uh, who never could remember, and they moved in together. His parents are Loretta and David Allen Greer, which whom are married, and they have another son, which is his brother in this show. Um, 
and his brother Lil Rail is actually his brother, and he's married to uh, Tiffany Haddish. That's the premise of the show, right? And there's so many episodes. Actually, it's actually a good show. If you have time, go into your Hulu and watch the Carl Michael show. That shit is actually really funny. I think you're going to really enjoy it. Um, because, again, Loretta, Loretta Devine is in it. David Allen Greer is in it. Tiffany Haddish is in it. Lil Rail is in it. Enough said. Anyway, so um, where right on the street is, everybody is mad and cooking, honey, because this little boy out of nowhere who was a nobody for the most part, um, who did one little comedy show. I think he wrote and produced and ex was executive producing all this different stuff on the show. Of course, he got money and all this different stuff from him. He got paid and being the produ pro executive producer <laughs> and acting in it and writing and all this different shit. So, but recently, of course, some few years ago, he came out as gay, right? I, mean, I think maybe years ago. And now he has this Weird as fuck HBO special. Now, who he fucked or sucked or licked their butt to get a HBO special, I don't know. But I dropped tips on the floor. Child, look, I'm hungry. I don't know what I'm going to eat for dinner tonight, but it's going to be something. That sounds so fucking old. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. Old bitch. <laughs> but, Gerard, which is HBO special, I think some of, some people I talked to on the phone about it, I saved them from watching it. Because they had kind of planned on watching it more, so I told them what it was about. Not interested. I personally have seen three episodes. I'm tired. So basically, he has a reality show on HBO called The Carl Michael Reality Show. And in this show, basically, uh, it, it, I thought we were supposed to be getting to know him and his journey um, about him being gay and, you know, understanding that, coming to terms with it, what that looks like to the family dynamic. Um... People are saying he was catching fleck about saying this racist joke about how he has his white boyfriend, which he has a white boyfriend. And the white boyfriend loves to read, so he brings him books and shit like that. And he decided to start buying books just to look like he was interested in reading. He says he made the joke of he's a slave and the white boyfriend is the son of the master that comes to teach him how to read by candlelight or some shit like that. And he made the comment too after that. He says, he doesn't like that joke saying the bar from the white guy doesn't like that joke because he's a good person. He tells that joke for himself. All I can say is from the episode that I've watched with, 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 with Gerard Carmichael on that reality show is, it's a big cry for help for him. It's a big cry for help. I'm going to tell you why. Because I saw a 30-some-odd-year-old, late mid-30-year-old mid gentleman coming out of a shell, trying to find an environment to be socially accepted in with his sexuality and just as the person he is um, because his family doesn't accept it. He, I guess he, he, he's, he's not speaking to his family. His family isn't speaking to him. He's even gone to the Emmys and won an Emmy Award. His family was not there. Um, but from all that trauma, you know, being unwelcomed in his family and having that block with your own mother and father, I think it's pushed him to a point of acting out, but acting out at a point where he's an adult and the only person that, that, that can actually fix the problem is truly, truly him. Because even with him being in a relationship with this young white boy, Michael, Gerard is fucking every motherfucking thing that comes through the door. This little nasty bitch done sucked toes in the first episode. He done ate booty hole. He done sucked toes. He done sucked, he done sucked 75 miles in like the, the, the first two episodes. 
every time the boy Michael leaves, the boyfriend leaves because they left. They lived in two different towns. I think the boy lived in Ohio or some shit, or Omaha. One of them big potatoes. I don't know fuck. And he lives in L.A. Carmichael does. And every time the door closes, he's on the phone scrolling on Grinder or, or or some kind of fucking gay app to find some dude to bring over to his house to fuck. All he does is sit around. Let me tell you how sick this motherfucker was in my mind. His friend seen a, 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 a bucket of what was called boy butter. And the shit looked like the old country crock butter buckets. This bitch told his friend he likes to take the middle finger and take the butter and dip it and rub it on the Latinos boy's butt crack hole. And the country crock butter bucket um, helps him or, or gives him a vision of his grandmother while he's fucking these Latino twins. What kind of sick shit is that? What kind of I want another chip, y'all. I don't know if I should be eating on camera, but what kind of sick shit is that? I don't want to think about my grandmother when I'm fucking. I don't want to think about nothing. Well, who I'm fucking? How I got to keep up? What's my next move? How I'm going to handle this? Control breathing? It's a net in my house. Control breathing and shit? And maybe we, we, we keep the sheets clean. I'm gonna swallow that shit. Making sure we keep the sheets clean. And other things, of course. But I ain't thinking about my grandmother. That's nasty. But watching this. Let me close these up. I'm just. But watching this about Carmichael, Gerard, whatever, it just, to me, it just says a, a broken person and he's seeking solace or affection or love in individuals because he hadn't received it at home. I mean, I had an argument with some with a group of people on Instagram behind this dude. And I wasn't defending anything that he's doing. But I was defending a, a point. They said, um, that's crazy. See, gay folk, ever I told you, they always have all the more deep ass issues and problems and shit. And they put them on everybody else. I jumped in the chat. I said, well, for the gay community, I'll take this one. First of all, there's no way you can sit up on here and tell me that we all in this world don't have some deep motherfucking issues. Gay, straight, heterosexual, bisexual, uh, beast. I don't give a fuck what you do. As an individual, people have deep issues. And regardless of what it stems from, but the thing about it is, I told this person, I said, it's crazy how you get on here and showcase your ass and show your ignorance just as much as he would. I said, and then on the fact of that, you will go out of your way to try and cast more um, stigma upon a group of people because of your personal way of thinking. And only because one motherfucker that's alleged to be in the group stepped out of line and said some goofy ass, stupid ass shit that don't make no sense. That don't make no sense. It was a black guy. And I told him, I said, well, that seems about equal to somebody coming out here and saying all black folk like watermelon and chicken. You fish to get in their motherfucking ass. Y'all know that's our trigger. It might be true, bitch, but it ain't because all of us don't like no watermelon. I eat watermelon every now and again. I can't say eat no motherfucking watermelon all the time. Now, fried chicken, if that deems me as a nigga, then cluck, cluck. I eat some yard bird. But that deems him as the same, because they be adding to the Popeyes, too. I, I ain't want no Popeyes. They might fuck my stomach, though. I don't want to eat tonight. But the bottom line I'm trying to make to you is... <clears throat> I feel like, he, even though he's getting therapy in these episodes, I don't think it's doing enough. 
because he's still fucking this. He's still fucking that. He said he just want to fuck everybody all the time. Now he's gay. Now he want to fuck. And he likes the whites and the Latinos. Now the big thing was, why, was, was talking about why does black men get money and going to get a white mate. She, us gays can say the same thing. They get rich and go get a white mate. They don't fuck with us. And some would say it's easier to adapt or get through on the white side over there as a, as a, as a, as a gay in the white community. I would agree a little bit. I would agree. Because most of the times they're not as judgmental. So it's a little bit easier. But they are black educated guys. That that have decent circles that that know we you know who to be around, who not to be around, or has a decent friend group that don't always read Langston Hughes and shit like that, you know, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but of course, I guess the credit ratings are better on this side too. Inheritances are more likely to happen on that side. Just saying. But the boy is a sexual deviant. The boy likes to eat too much. I actually like to suck too many toes. He talks all that old stuff about have you ever sucked a married man's dick and he tell you how good and how much more better it is than his wife's? No! No! No, I cannot relate to that. No! Fuck no! No! That is disgusting. Why is that disgusting? First of all, I don't want no married man. His wife, his his thing have been all up in his woman's courtesy. Ain't talking about no. Mm -mm. No, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I gotta take me a sip. Uh, uh, uh. But. He, to me, he just sounds like Lil Nas X of the comedy world. Because all he talks about is fucking and sex. But something wrong with him, he's sick. He's sick in the mind. He need help from somebody or something. Because sex ain't going to get it. Because what's going to happen is he going to fuck around there and get some he can't get back. He going to fuck around there and, and get more than just a nut. Y'all know what kind of work I do. I tell y'all the time I work in infectious disease, STI testing, HIV, and 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 and, and gonorrhea and chlamydia and and, and sniffleless uh, testing and stuff and HIV. Y'all know what I do. So y'all ain't ever got to worry about him. Oh yeah, AJ Reed was out there. No, the fuck he wasn't. No, the fuck he wasn't. Now, if y'all sitting there saying y'all seen that fat bitch with some shares on by four or five o'clock in the morning, sticking her down at the Waffle House, picking up a to-go order, that was probably me. You know what I'm saying? Or you see me down there at IHOP, three, four in the morning, and I'm sure I ain't just left no club. I probably sent up in the bed like, you know what? A couple of pancakes wouldn't hurt right about now. I got room for him. That kind of shit. I seen AJ down at the bath house. No, the fuck you didn't. Because you, cause first of all, the bath house I attend, you can't even see in. And there's only one. And I tell you I was going to finish it. But no, um, <clears throat> I don't do those sort of things. Let me tell you something. I don't look down on folks either because people are people, right? But what I have a problem with is when you don't take care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, and then two, your sexual health is important. I tell y'all motherfucking ass all the time. If you have not been tested this year for HIV or you have you have not had your STI testing, get somewhere locally and get tested. 
if you know you done fucked a couple of people this this year alone already, you need to go get tested. With no rubber, you need to get tested. And prep. Prep is not just for gay people. Okay? Prep is for every motherfucking body. And let me let y'all know right now. HIV is prevalent among the heterosexual heterosexual community just as much as any other community. And I tell people all the time, they have black gays and Hispanic gays and the white guys and everybody else fall underneath that. I really don't believe those statistics because if you really look at the data, quite frankly, they would have now that I saw the other day is uh, gay, bisexual, and men that sleep with men. Now, why did they categorize it as men that sleep with men? Because those men, if they're not being penetrated themselves or sucking no dicks, they don't consider themselves as bisexual or gay. So they still consider themselves as what? Straight. So the data, the data still doesn't con con completely balance out because people are still out here lying about the things that they do in their sexual proclivities. But the bottom line I'm trying to make you guys is you have to take care of just not your diabetes or your blood sugar and keep that shit going. Not just your cholesterol, make sure it's right. Your body in its totality, that is your sexual health. That is, a, There is a thing called your sexual health. And what you need to do is attend to it. Now, I will tell you guys this. Your primary care physician may not um, know uh, much about these things because they're not taught these things in school. If they don't go into the school and want to focal, you know, have a focal point on these uh, things uh, with STIs and stuff like that, they're not taught these, thing, these things in um, regular school for doctors, right? So... Um, I try to tell y'all there's chlamydia, gonorrhea, and, and syphilis out here on the rise. People don't know that you can get syphilis and, and chlamydia, I'm sorry, gonorrhea and chlamydia in the throat and in the butthole in the kerchief and the dangling. Yes. And there are things out here to protect people that is actually free. Whether you have insurance or not, there is PrEP that will, predict, will protect you from HIV if you out here in these streets doing anything, uh, having fun and stuff like that, because I'm not saying anything about nobody being no ho, because that's not what we're doing over here. We're not doing no judgment shit. That's not what we're doing. What we're trying to do is make sure that you guys are protecting yourself. That's mostly for these young kids and some of you older ones as well. Y'all out here fucking these old men with them cowboy boots on them old uh, straw hats and stuff. And y'all don't know who born y'all they been in. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who's stable, who else stable they been in up over there. And for these young girls and young men over here on these college campuses, y'all need to get yourselves tested and make sure to get yourself on prep. If you're having a difficult time, drop down in the comments, hit me up in my email or something if you need some confidentiality because there's no stigma and no shame over here on this page when it comes to that. If you need help finding somewhere locally, Hit me up and I guarantee you I will find somewhere free near you that will actually assist you with getting these things taken care of. Okay? I'm serious about this shit. I'm over here working every day hard preaching and spreading the gospel about prep. What it does, how it helps and all those things because these things were not out when, 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 when I was in my 20s. And some of my 30s, I don't believe they were, this stuff was out. But thank God I made it. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to the spirit that I made it. And I know a lot of you are as well. But at the same time, um, lift your hands and say prep. Listen, give him, that's, that's, you ought to cut a step right there. That's a good place to praise him. Get yourself on some prep. And for you fellas, there's, um, I think we call it MPIP or DoxyPIP. Uh, come on down now. Uh, go on down to your local clinic that participates in that program and they can actually get you on that 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 medication <clears throat> excuse me also possibly more than likely for free that pill basically says that when you go out and have a good night on probably saturday night like you know everybody likes to do on friday maybe in, even at sunday brunch you go out there and fuck something and realize the next morning you don't even know who the fuck that was you get on up you take you one of those because some some places go ahead and prescribe it to you within that 72 hour window because you only have a 72 hour window to take it and if you're outside of that window now you got just got to test and wait for the results to come back and then treat but um 
that doxy will help prevent gonorrhea, syphilis, and chlamydia. And it's not 100 proof on that one, but it's a better coverage than having nothing. And honestly, monogamy, if you can, if, you, if that's not your thing, if throuples and all this other stuff is your thing, uh, open relationships, you need to have open heart-to-heart -heart conversation with your partner and readdress the rules every so often to make sure that the rules are being followed and that no one is um, going outside the relationship all, already with written permission or verbal permission, but making sure that when you come back to this house, you ain't bringing shit back to this motherfucker. Well, not in this house, or not over here. But you see what I'm saying? But back to your house, when y'all got these, these rules set into place, this person knows that, hey, while you're going out there doing your thing, you're going to have to protect yourself. And if you, as a matter of fact, if you go out there and do something, I need to know about it in some kind of way. So that way we know we can go get tested because we don't get tested every three months because you should be getting tested every three to six months. Everybody should be getting tested every three to six months. If you have any ideas, that you, if you have any thoughts that your partner is stepping out, um, you don't trust them fully, have that conversation with them at some point, go in together and get tested together. Uh, but still go and get tested. Open relationships, have that conversation. You young adults, I don't care if you're in church or not. Just because you're in church don't mean you ain't fucking. Take your motherfucking ass on. After you leave the house of prayer, go on over to the house of hope and go and get your motherfucking ass on some prep. Because I'm telling y'all, this shit is getting real out here. It has gotten real. It is out of hand. It's to the point now, syphilis is so high over here in, in, in Houston. So medicine for treatment is damn near in the, in the proper dosage or in, in the recommended dosage. Let me take that back. Um, in the referred, pre preferred dosage, 2.4 by a cylinder if you got a new infection. But you can't find any 2.4s anywhere in, even in, in wholesale because all you can find are 1.2s to make up the 2.4s to, to give two shots because... It's, it's too much going on. We can't keep up with the, the demand. So what you going to do when they come for you? What are you going to do when they don't have any more syphilis medication to give out here in these streets? When the city says, well, you know what? We bankrupt. We don't have nothing else. Syphilis can take your life untreated. Syphilis can cause you to go blind, lose your mind, and eventually your life untreated. Yeah. So, um... I don't want to go on too much about that because I feel like I had too much fun, but I need y'all to know that I'm serious about that. Sexual health is a thing. You ladies, test it. Fellas, test it. I don't give a fuck if you young or old. If you ain't married or you don't know your partner like that, you need to be tested. Get yourself tested and, and get yourself whatever help you may need. And if you need help from me, let me know. I mean it with every fiber of my motherfucking being. Let me know. And I will do my damnness. I will find you somewhere in your area for free to make sure you get yourself taken care of. Understand that. All right? But anyway, that's it for tonight. I'm going to get my funky ass out of here and go find me something to eat. Uh, I'm hungry. And I'm going to eat and get the remote control. You know, we don't say remote control. Where I'm from, we say remote control. I don't know what the fuck that's about. But anyway... If this is your first video, please go ahead and now hit that subscribe bell so that when I upload these videos and go live, you can be one of the first ones to yes. Jump down in the comment section and let me know what you thought about my topics, my opinion, and the show. Also, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. That helps your boy out a lot in the analytical section. Last but not least, share these videos. Share with your cousin. Share with your friend. Share with somebody you know. Share with somebody you don't know. Share with somebody you like. Share with some son bitch you don't give two fucks about because nine times out of ten, I have y'all down there the cycling and I was eating the chopped Mexican salad with them avocados in there and a little grilled chicken and the avocado ranch dressing with a little sea salt on there. Oh, yes, and a little them, them chips. To lit. Anyway, I love you guys so, so much. I am so, again, glad to see you guys again um, heart to heart. I love you guys so so much there would be no me on this platform without you so i do always as i usually would i tip my crown to you all and i bow to you all and i thank you so much last but not least make sure to always love on yourself first and love on those in return who give you the same back because we ain't got time for no motherfucking thing yeah all right love you cousins
Later.